Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today and welcome to the home of FIFA career mode hints, tips and news. If you are a first time viewer and you do go on to enjoy this video, please help the channel grow by hitting that subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, welcome back and thanks for your continued support. And if you want extra FIFA career gems content, then just head over to either my Twitter or Instagram. In this video I will share with you my top 5 basic career mode tips, mainly aimed at casual career mode players, but even the most experienced career mode players might find a few of these useful. So firstly is to be aware of a player's potential status. Now there are three of these which means a player has a decent potential. Firstly it's showing great potential, meaning the player has a potential of 80 to 85. If the player is an exciting prospect, his potential is 86 to 90. And finally players with potential to be special have a potential of 91 plus. But when does a potential status appear and when does it disappear? Now we've got here Ricky Jade Jones from Peterborough who is 17 years of age and has a potential of 82 but with him only having a 59 overall the potential status is not yet visible. A potential status only appears when a player reaches 60 overall. And young players will keep a potential status providing they are over 60 overall right up until their 22nd birthday and you can check on a player's birthday by going into edit player. And the player we're using for an example is Martin Odegaard and his birthday is December 17th. So if we fast forward to December 17th and then check Martin Odegaard's potential status, it has been replaced by has that special something. And all that means is that he has the flair trait. Should he not have the flair trait, the potential status will be replaced with at club since followed by the year. So that is the potential status explained. Let's move on to tip number two, which is to make full use of of the global transfer network scout instructions now scout instructions for me have two main uses number one is searching for contract expiry players and the way you would do that is to set the contract length from zero to one years you look for players over the age of 23 because players under the age of 23 cannot be signed on a pre-contract agreement and i'd also put in there first team quality so we only get decent players who are at the level of your team but as pointed out in a video last week, contract expiry players in FIFA 21 are extremely rare. So the main reason that I do use the scout instructions is to search for wonder kids. And the way you would do that is by searching for any position. The contract length doesn't really matter. Attributes need to say promising and the age range between 16 and 19. The next step is to send your scouts out to the top leagues. So I always go for England. Then I go for France, Germany, Portugal, Italy, Spain, and also throw in there the MLS and Turkey from time to time. And then it's a matter of searching through the results to find some hidden gems it would fit into your team. Moving on to tip number three, and that is to search for players using release clauses. We'll do again a wonder kid search, so we'll set the age range between 16 and 18. The transfer status will be changed to release clause, and we're going to do this league by league, starting off in Argentina. And then it's a matter of searching through the few results that are returned, looking for players that have got a potential status. And once you've identified some players that have got a potential status, add them to your transfer hub shortlist. And you simply repeat this process for the different leagues. But the main point to this is all these players have a release clause, which means you've not got to enter into transfer negotiations. You simply pay that release clause and then go on to contract negotiations with the player. So after only searching for wonder kids, I've got a pretty extensive transfer hub with quite a few players in there. And even though I'm not going to sign all these straight away, I will keep all these players in the transfer hub because the release clause will not increase until they either renew their contract with the current club or transfer away. Now the penultimate tip doesn't really apply to season number one of career mode, but from season two onwards, you should always be checking the free agents for some quality players. But the fact of the matter is there are absolutely loads of free agents from season two onwards so the best way is to filter them using age groups and individual positions and then yet again it's a matter of scrolling through the results highlighting any players you're interested in and then shortlisting them in your transfer hub and i have to say in this example i did get some quality results across all age groups first of which is luca nets who at one point in fifa 21 was an exciting prospect and also in free agents with the arsenal youngsters miguel aziz and following balagun 
Also in free agents was a centre-back who's featured quite a bit for Liverpool this season, Nathaniel Phillips. But the best one up to yet was definitely Julian Draxler, who at 27 years of age and an 81 overall would walk into most teams. A player I was quite surprised to see in free agents was the real face Spurs right midfielder, Eric Lamella. But the best free agent that I found using this search method, even though he's 35 years of age in season number two, is a Real Madrid centre-back, Sergio Ramos. Moving on to the fifth and final tip, and that is to be aware of the differences when Simi matches. Now there are three options when simming matches in FIFA 21. Option number one is a calendar sim. Now this means your team lineup will be chosen by the AI assistant manager. Now a calendar sim is all well and good if you want to progress quickly through the seasons, but not very good if you're concentrating on player development. Option number two is a quick sim, and again, the team lineup will be picked by your assistant manager. I've got my default formation here with two wingers that I like to use regularly, Tizolis and Almada. But upon choosing a quick sim, going across the rating, he substituted both my wingers for Elliot and Bernabai, who was actually a left back and not a winger. But my preferred option is option number three, which is a manual sim, quickly followed by jump to result. And when using this option, you get full control over your team lineup. As you well know, should you choose at this point, you can also jump in and take over the match yourself. But for matches that I'm not too bothered about what the result is, I always start off this way and then quickly jump to result. Like I said, it gives me full control over the team lineup. And when you're concentrating on player development, that is a massive bonus. So those were my top five quite basic but very useful tips that I use to enhance my FIFA 21 career modes. If you have any tips of your own, please add them in the comment section. But that does conclude today's video. All that remains to say is thank you so much for watching. Please remember to tune into my channel next time. But until then, it's FCG out.